Hey everyone, this is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com and today is Friday, it's April 5th. It is 3.40 p.m. Eastern Time. We're about 20 minutes away from the close. And uh, there's a very slow momentum. Uh, today was again a digestion day. We're basing at the highs with uh, no particular follow through in the market. So I decided to do the video today. I will be away uh, Saturday and Sunday. I will not be available to do the video. So I think that now is a good time to do it since there's not much going on in the market. Before we dive into the charts, I just wanna highlight the fact that Monday, Tuesday, we would have, we're going to have a very slow um, start to, uh, to the week. Um, Monday, Tuesday, we don't have a lot of economic releases that are coming out. And then on Wednesday, on April 10th, we have the ECB press conference at 8.30. And definitely we have the monetary policy statement at 7.45. So that's going to be the biggest news. And we have the FOMC meeting minutes at 2 p.m. Eastern. So these are Wednesday is going to be pretty busy. We're going to see some um, um, price action, early price action um, around 7.45 to 9 o'clock. And that's before the newer trading session open. And for Thursday, we uh, have the OPEC meeting. Um, and that is, uh, so Thursday, April 11th. And last but not least, guys, we're beginning earning season on Friday. And we're gonna be starting with financials. So that's gonna be very interesting. And this is actually the fuel that we've been waiting for the couple, for the last couple of weeks or so. But we can't complain. We had pretty good, uh, pretty good market dynamics for the month of uh, March. All right. So with that being said, let's dive into charts. This is a weekly chart of the M and S and P. As you can see, that we're having a very strong close. Uh, we're we're heading into a very very strong close. We're, less than 20 minutes 20 minutes away but definitely this is going to be a very strong close and you notice here that the price is trading above this prior pivot high from January 29th when the volatility has begun had begun uh, we still have a tradable void all the way to 29.47, uh, and this is the, the September 17 high uh, into the mini S&P uh, nice continuation pattern as well onto the monthly charts and more likely that on uh, next week going into uh, going into the ECB, we may have some uh, some follow through into the 2950. It seems that this is definitely the area that the price wants to push. There is the tradable void, so the price may want to get sucked into this void for a continuation higher. Let's move on to the daily chart for some actionable trading ideas and see what we can look for at the open on Sunday or going into early Monday. Again, today, you can see the very strong, uh, very strong continuation higher. So today we have the non-farm payroll um, numbers come out and the market blasted higher. As you can see right here, we're still trading into this resistance, but we still have a lot of room for this prior high. Although uh, we have some resistance at 2,900, we have resistance at 2,904, we have resistance at 2,916, and these are going to be the target areas for next week, uh, all the way into the 2,947. So there are still bands of resistance that are going to put some pressure on price as the price continues to accelerate into these highs. Let's move on to the hourly chart for some actionable trading ideas, and let's see if we can continue to look for pullback zones or uh what we need to be looking for going into early next week as you can see from this uh, one hour chart we've had a pretty strong consolidation phase uh into wednesday and thursday and then uh in the overnight we broke out definitely this represent the uh the num the nfp numbers um uh, following the NF, uh, NFP numbers, uh, the price uh, the price literally broke out from this prior pivot high that was established on Wednesday, and we made a new high of 28.97, which is impressive. It's a new high for the year. And uh, as of right now, you can see that we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, six hours of consolidation at this level. Definitely, there's one thing that I want to note here, and that is the fact that the, pro the, the 10 exponential moving average is following price. This is a dynamic support level, and as long as this uh, uh, 10 EMA is not being violated, we can still expect for a grind higher. 
any pullbacks are going to be viable. So what I wanna mention here is that even if we get a pullback into the 88 or even into the 80 zone, these are still going to be uh, areas prone to buying pressure because we're still trading in a very strong upward directional buy. So we're still very bullish. I'm not gonna attempt to short and, you know, like I mentioned in uh, most of the webinars that I have hosted, and events that I have uh, that I have uh, uh, that I have been uh, uh, invited to, uh, I don't really like to short anything that is strong. I have no reason to short it. So I go with the strongest trend, and I'm patient enough to wait for pullbacks to, sap to happen for me to get into these tr uh, these trades. Uh, I'm a trend trader and this is, you know, this is pretty much has been, had, has been working for me for the last 20 plus years. So, um, I don't intend on changing that. Um, again, we're developing here a little bit of fanning out of the moving averages. It's the 50, the 20 and the 10, which means that we may be setting up for another power run to the upside. Now we would have to see what it's gonna, what's gonna happen through the weekend and how we open on Sunday. But the way we are, uh, the way the, the structure, the chart structure is right now, we're definitely pointing higher. For today, the mini S&P and today, once again, it's not Sunday, but today is Friday. So on Friday, we're pretty much gonna close with a 12 point gain into the mini S&P. All right, let's move on to the mini Dow. Emity Dow has been the superstar yesterday. He reacted really well uh, to price action. And let me just take this to the weekly charts. All right. Uh, you can see that the weekly chart here into the Emity Dow is pointing out to a very nice breakout of this uh, 26, 300, 20, 26, actually 26, uh, 26, 250 to 26, 300. 26, 300 was the line in the sand that if we broke above that area, we, uh, we can see a continuation higher. Back into the 26, 500 and uh, 26, 550. These are the new, uh, the next two target levels. You can see that 26, they, we still have a tradable void all the way into this prior peak high from January 29th. And this is at the 26, uh, 684. So we still have tradable void into that area. And the next target is going to be into this high of 26,966 level. So we still have a tradable void. We still, uh, I like the fact that we have tested, retested, and actually broke above the 250 to 300 level. And we're trading above that. We're trading about 130 points above that zone. So that 300 level moving forward for next week will become our support level. So pullbacks into the 300 zone will become viable should that occur. All right, let's move on to the daily chart and see how we're gonna be closing the day. You can see that um, there was a relative weakness into the m and &E Dow today. So yesterday had relative strength compared to all the other indices, now a little bit weaker on the weaker side. And it's just consolidating at that 400 level right now. You can see that the price is hovering now. It's into the 427 and it's just pulled back ever so slightly. So not that much pulled back for about 50 points or so from the high. Uh, so moving forward, this is a continuation pattern. We have a continuation pattern onto the monthly chart. And if next week we're going to break above 26,500, then we should accelerate higher into the target that I have mentioned earlier. Uh, actionable trading ideas, let's we'll go to the hourly charts. And let's, all right. And as you can see here, we're having a little bit of trouble. So we popped into the NFP numbers, we pulled back, we uh, came into the 372 level. Actually, this was right at lunchtime and revisiting these prior lows from the overnight trading session. This is a pullback from the overnight trading session. And we still, we're still trading well above the minor support level here into the 330 to 300 level. So this is gonna be an area to watch. Should we come in more, into the 26200 then things will start shifting a little bit and we would be uh very careful in our approach uh for uh for a possible short under this area but again i will still be looking for pullback buys into this area scalps to the short side may be 
uh, may be possible under 300, more so under 200 level than anything else. Uh, if you recall the mini S&P 500, the price was actually holding uh, above the 10 exponential moving average. And now because of the strong consolidation and the relative weakness that we had, you can see that the price is actually uh, just uh, uh, gyrating around these two moving averages, just coiling around this area, around the 400 level. So any pullback, and we have a strong confluence zone here between 300 and 330 level. So if we hold this area, definitely, uh, possibly if we get a pullback into Sunday, early Sunday or in the overnight through this, uh, into this area, we may, uh, we may, be uh, we may have a pullback buy occur uh closer to the london session or to the new york trading session other than that we don't have any significant earnings that are coming out we don't have any significant economic uh, uh, uh economic releases that are scheduled to come out so this is going to be front and center uh major price action the fact that we're still holding the at these highs it means that you know most of the players are still engaged into uh, into this very strong trend and they're not committing to uh, uh, to release any of their positions. So they're still holding on to their big positions. Uh, we we still have uh, we still have normal volume, so this does not suggest any selling pressure. So the current volume suggests steady accumulation still. So we're still into that second phase. Uh, and uh, other than that, I don't see anything else happening. It's just a range bound day. It's just a consolidation phase and maybe ready to propel higher if the, these parameters 300 or even 250 are going to uh, hold, then we could see another leg higher. Let's move on to NASDAQ. And uh, we're gonna take it back to the weekly charts. You could see here that NASDAQ was very strong weekly chart definitely continuation higher uh from uh, from last week and we still have a tradable void into the high of 77 28.75 and definitely this is where the price is going to be really attracted to taking on that high right here we had a phenomenal quarter uh that we have ended last week and you could see here that beautiful really nice rotation uh that came in and we actually had a really nice we've benefited from from this this continuous move up and i know that i kept on mentioning that you know and other than that you know when when we were dipping into and as scary as it was in uh, october november and even december uh when you were looking at a higher time frame this was nothing but a pullback within this very strong trend so uh, I disagree with bear market with er everything that was hovering and all the noise that was creating uh, created around those dips. In situations like this, you've got to step back, mute all the noise, you know, and just trade what you see. Your pattern is your uh, is your best uh, uh, advisor. All right, so um, back to uh, the daily charts. Daily charts suggest a bull sandwich in formation. We actually traded above this prior high. We actually peek a, made, done, have done this little peekaboo into the uh, 76, I think it was 7608 to be precise. 7608 and now still very strong candle. We break above 16 here and we're gonna go, uh, and we're on our way to the high of 7695 plus. So we still have a lot of room uh, to the upside. The one hour chart for immediate price action all right so uh in the overnight trading session we hovered higher you could see the moving averages was we are still respecting the 10 exponential moving average a little bit of sell uh, selling pressure here is coming from the day trading factor uh we're about four minutes away actually five minutes away from the close of the session so um here uh, we're still holding the 90 level 90 level is an area of minor support deriving from these prior pivot highs and as long as we hold these current levels where we can still uh we can still uh rotate higher and break above this area like i said i will be looking for and any pullback that should happen in the uh overnight trading session on sunday going into monday these levels are going to be critical and again this week was more of a swing trading market than than a day trading market because day trades had really kind of like very choppy 
a very choppy stop. So if you would have tried to have uh, tight stops or you know hard stops, definitely it would have you would have been wiggled out uh, of the trade. So it was more of a watch and play with the chart flow when it came to day trading. So as long as we're holding the 90s and the 80s level all the way into the 60 level right here, we're still gonna be looking for pullback buy opportunities. All right, let's uh, continue with Russell. Uh, Russell uh, had a very aggressive move uh, into today, but let's check out the monthly chart. Mon monthly chart is uh, actually poised for a bull sandwich uh, and that the trigger for this bull sandwich is going to be uh, over 1600. We see a print of 1600. Uh, Russell is going to be on the run, and we do have a really big target for it into the 1700 and 1750. So it's going to move probably in 10 point increments uh, throughout the uh, throughout the uh, day trading session, uh, and. Um, I, I see it higher. So the charts are pointing definitely higher. We had a really nice move higher. You can see that the price from the weekly chart is uh, definitely closing, or, uh, not closing, but it's definitely moving in the right direction. All right, weekly charts, uh, pullback buy, um, uh, pullback buy, and the pullback buy came into the area of support. You can see the support from, uh, from October, and November right here before we had uh, we have the wipeout. A uh, lot of stops were uh, taken out right here. Um, and uh, you could see that 1458 is still uh, a lot of support right here. Now, this can all also be seen as a head and shoulder, inverse head and shoulder pattern where the neckline is into the 1600. And we have, uh, we have, this is the head, this is the right shoulder right here, this is the left shoulder, so we can see this as a breakout. And this is exactly what I've mentioned onto the monthly chart. So within this month, if we see a break over 1602, 1603, Pattern, pattern. This pattern is still uh, still has a lot of juice in it, and will continue higher. 1650, 16, uh, 1700, 1750, and so on. It, it has a lot of uh, a lot of tradable voice. So it's going to make a really good day trading pattern, swing trading as well. All right, uh, this is the uh, weekly chart. So let's move on to the daily chart. The daily chart has digested today, Friday. Uh, April 5th, the 200 SMA, and it's reaching an area of resistance. This resistance, now, we close strong. The fact that we close strong, this is a good sign and a positive sign for price action that moving on to the Sunday trading session, Monday, and obviously for next week's trading session, we may be continuing higher. We have a very strong close. I mean, two minutes away, and the market is going to close very, very strongly. We just have... A, a two minute and a five minute pullback by right now with a 15 minute continuation. So it does look, uh, it does look higher. So uh, once again, the key for next week is going to be a blast over 1600 and this is going to bring more buying pressure to our charts. Let's continue with gold. Uh, gold, uh, let's take it to the weekly chart. Uh, on the weekly chart, gold is setting up for a buy. 1302 if we see Sunday, Monday, or going into next week, as long as we hold these lows into the 85, if we see a, a break over uh, 1303, this is going to be a pullback buy opportunity for a continuation higher into the 1320 and 1340. And this is very, very easy pattern. All right, the, the hourly chart, I'm not really going to go into it. I don't see any patterns there. Uh, on the daily structure, we need to, uh, we need to see a little bit of pressure uh, and uh, price above this 10 EMA and the 20 SMA. And then once we see that, once we see the break and a close above the 1303 level, this is gonna be the first sign for a buy, whether this is gonna happen on Sunday or it's gonna happen Monday, Tuesday, or whenever it happens. But if we get that uh, trigger over 1305, it's gonna be a buy with a target profit target. Uh, first target is gonna be into 1310, second target is gonna be into 1320, and then we have further targets on into the 13, uh, 1330 area, 1340, and 1350 back again. Uh, let's uh, check out oil. Don't forget the OPEC meeting this next week. And uh, um, obviously, let's go to the weekly chart right here. Okay, market closed, four o'clock. All right, so a very strong close to crude. 
finally closed above the 50 simple moving average the last time and this is the weekly chart the last time when it uh closed uh when it closed above the um 50 sma was back in let's see 2017 right here okay it was right here in september uh in september 2017 so we're back uh, closing above this uh this 50 sma we still have a little bit of room for a continuation higher however keep in mind see this prior pivot low this is creating minor resistance at this level so we're going to get some pressure bands in price right here but as long as the price and today we had a phenomenal move uh on, on a one hour chart base and even the daily chart suggests that it may just continue uh continue higher and the fact that we had the three day consolidation and today the breakout onto um onto the daily chart this is it we closed finally we closed above and we i mean the last time when we really were visiting the 200 SMA and obviously we collapsed here was way back here in um, 2018. So at this point we had one, two, three bars above the 200 simple moving average and we had this uh, today's price action that took out, took out these prior highs and this was a digestion uh, phase of that resistance minor resistance that we had from the weekly chart this is the resistance right here that i'm talking about right here into the uh, 63 level the fact that we have consolidated there for three actually four days uh it means that we may we may be ready to take on new highs into the 64 64 40 65 dollars and even more back into the 67 dollars so we're right on track not bearish okay all right let's move on to bonds and uh let's take it to the weekly chart uh bonds as you can see here did not have a really fantastic week we have the pullback back into the minor support level in fact it's a confluence zone at 146.30 and we pretty much stabilized into this area because we got a little bit of lift into today's trading session so we tapped onto the a minor support level here into the 146.28 and we got a little bit of lift here let's see what we have in store uh for the daily chart so the daily chart you can see it way better here this is all resistance that translates now into minor support level for current price action we got we have the rotation here off of this uh 20 sma i don't like the fact that the trigger is coming right into this resistance and into these bottoms right here this support level is right now creating resistance for price action uh if into uh a sunday tuesday a sunday or monday or even Tuesday, we're gonna get a pop over 148. There are further targets for higher, and the target is 148.26, 149, and back into the 150. However, the weekly chart, like I said, I'm not very thrilled about it because the weekly chart still needs to work out and it still needs a lot of effort to get over uh, over this high into the 149. But still, the daily is very constructive and, uh, and definitely provides a very tight risk compared to what the weekly chart is suggesting uh let's move on to some commodities uh here and uh we're gonna review copper and we're gonna start with the weekly chart in copper so copper has been tr really trying to establish a new support level into the 2.83 level above the 2.83 level this level is a confluence zone it's also arriving from um the, the this shelf of support is also created by these prior uh, prior pivot highs is actually actually a range uh, into the 283 to 284 that is creating the shelf of support for current price action a pop over three dollars into next week may release more buying pressure that may take the price to 310 320 330 back into this cluster high uh, let's move on to natural gas and natural gas weekly you could see a doji right here and uh, we have uh, we we actually came in one two three four weeks right now so we we were we were long in this trade we uh, actually trailed out at 2.83 and we let the price come back down now i have an alert here as you can see at 2.537 and uh if the price is going to come back into this level that may be an area of interest for me to start building a position in natural gas back again um I received uh, some questions today in regards to the VIX. 
whether I'm gonna start building a position in the VIX. As you can see here, I have a lot of alerts into the VIX. When I trade the VIX, I don't trade options. I trade the, the actual VXXB. And uh, I typically trade. Uh, 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 I typically trade the VIX when I'm engaged in uh, um, when I'm a little bit loaded to the long side. Uh, and uh, right now we're testing back the support level uh, from two weeks ago into the twenty-eight dollars. You can see twenty-seven ninety-eight. So we pretty much. Um, 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 uh, stop trading at that point, uh, closed at that point, okay? And if the market is still gonna blast higher, and like I said, the market is still not indicative of, uh, uh, of a pullback just yet. We haven't seen any signs uh, that the market may be into an overbought uh, area because there's still trading um, uh, into that tradable void, still on constant volume. So we don't have any signs of the momentum slowing down or sharp reversal, et cetera. So it's just a slow grind to the upside. And definitely we're gonna be monitoring the market very closely because it is hitting some bands of resistance from, uh, from September and October highs, right? So we have to be very diligent about that. But if the market is gonna have a last hurrah going into, uh, going into next week. So when you're hearing this video, it's probably this week. Um, so when the market is gonna, if the market is gonna have a last hurrah into the highs, then we're gonna have a dip in the VIX, most likely revisiting the twenty six, uh, the twenty six dollar level. For me, this would be, uh, this would be uh, an alert as to uh, as to uh, where I would look to start to leg in. But definitely, we have no reason. So as of right now, we're trading on support right here. And uh, and this is the weekly chart. The daily chart is still not suggesting any uh, congestion that may form a pullback buy opportunity for the VIX right now. So I still don't have a reason, uh, reason to get long just yet. Uh, the four hour chart that I often monitor, well, let's see here, I would need to have at least a close into the uh, 2840 or, or a pullback buy into the 2845 area. So I need to see a close at least above this 10 exponential moving average. And I need to see some kind of clue that I'm ready to, to tackle. So I don't think it's, it's time yet but I'm also keeping a close eye on it. And this is something that we trade uh, often uh, on uh, market reversals, okay? To protect our, uh, the trades that we're in, to offer some, um, definite, some, uh, some protection. All right, so this is all for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, don't forget that next week I will be speaking at the Wealth 365. Uh, summit and uh, uh, you could visit uh, social media, uh, any social media um, uh, outlet. Uh, the, our handle is Trade Out Loud. So if you go to Twitter uh, for a slash Trade Out Loud or Facebook for a slash Trade Out Loud, etc., you could register for the event. Uh, let me remind you that the seats are very limited. Uh, they're very close to maximum capacity. And I will be talking about technical analysis and how you can apply simple principles to help you with your intraday trading and uh, also to help you with swing trading. My presentation is scheduled for Wednesday, April 10th at 4 p.m. Eastern. So uh, feel, free to, uh, feel free to sign up, it is free. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you there. In the meantime, if you wanna uh, follow me on Twitter or, uh, or on Facebook, you may do so. Or if you wanna sign up for our, um, any of our services, or in particular, if you're a day trader or a swing trader or both, you can sign up for our trading room. Uh, you can find out more information at tradeoutloud.com for a slash live trading room. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful uh, weekend. Uh, charge your batteries for next week and uh, see you on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye.